Good morning, Pastor Connor here. It is 7.30 on December 4th. Thanks for being with me. You can tell right away we're not in our usual location because we're taking another field trip. Today I'm taking you to the Christmas tree and we're going to be looking at some of the chrismons on our Christmas tree in just a moment. But let me again share with you the recommendation to check out Biola University's The Advent Project. You can Google it or look back to yesterday. I put the, uh, the link there in the comment line but Biola University's The Advent Project. It pairs a visual art with music and poetry and wraps that all into a reflective devotion for each day of the Advent season. I encourage you to check that out. If you do, I'd love to hear your feedback on what you thought on it. It's not the sort of thing you're gonna just buzz through in five minutes because it's the kind of thing that will encourage you to reflect and to think. So you want to linger over it a little bit. So make yourself a cup of coffee, sit down, look at the Biola University's The Advent Project, and reflect upon what you see there and hear there and read there. Okay, so we're at the Christmas tree and we're looking at chrismons on the Christmas tree today. I'm going to pick a few off the tree in just a moment to share with you. But before I do, I want to share just 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 up front what you're seeing just from a distance so right away you can see that there is white and gold those are the two prominent colors that are on the chrismons they're not they're not ornaments they're chrismons because chrismons are specifically uh, symbolic of jesus in some way okay so they're not christmas ornaments in this case they're chrismons which are symbolic of jesus and all of these have been handmade over the years by zion members so they are uh, lovingly made carefully made and they're all deeply symbolic of jesus now the gold and the white the white is to symbolize the purity of christ and the gold is to symbolize the divinity, the majesty of Christ. So those colors come out very clearly and they're symbolic of Christ. Okay, we're gonna take a few off the tree and talk about them one at a time. I'm gonna grab this guy first and see if I can get the camera to focus on it. Okay, good, you can see that. So you see the I-N-R-I. Well, obviously in English it makes no sense, but in Greek, this is Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. And if you look at the symbolism around the, those four letters, you see the crown of thorns. And if you know your, your biblical history, you know that Jesus was forced to wear a crown of thorns. And above his head on the cross, Pilate had posted Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. So these letters are basically an acronym that remind us of what was posted over Jesus' head on the cross. Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, crucified for our sins. All right, let me put the chrismon back, and I'll grab another one off the tree. Another one deep in symbol, which you'll see in different forms on the tree. Okay, so you see here, if I get to focus, there. Okay, you see the fish, obviously. The fish shows up a few different times on the tree, and it's also deep in symbol. And you can see on there the Greek letters, okay? And in Greek, if you were to read just that Greek word, it's ichthus. That's the word for fish. So you think, what in the world? There's a word for fish, there's a picture of a fish. What does that have to do with Jesus? Well, you can think, well, he had this, he talked about being fishers of men. You had the miraculous catch of fish in scripture. Maybe that's it. And that's certainly part of it. But it's more than that, especially during times of persecution in history, when putting a cross up would have been pretty obvious, a fish was a symbol of the place where Christians would gather. And they understood then that those words, I mean, those letters in the word fish stood for certain things. So very briefly, Jesus Christ, uh, the Son of God, our Savior. So Jesus Christ... Uh, God's, I'm sorry, Jesus Christ, God, God's Son, our Savior. Quius Christos Theos, um, um, uh, oh, for Son, uh, Savior is the last one, is Soter. I'm forgetting now this, this one at this moment. But anyway, uh, these men stood for Jesus Christ, God's Son, our Savior. So it was an acronym, and it was built into the word fish. Pretty brilliant, isn't it? So yes, the fish, the fishers of men, uh, the miraculous catch of fish, those are important. But Jesus Christ, God's Son, our Savior, in acronym, in the word fish. So that's why you see this chrismon. 
Okay, let's put this guy back up on the tree. Let's grab another one. Um, let's see, this guy. This one at first may be a little bit, you may think, okay, I understand part of it, but I don't understand all of it. So you can see this is a star with a shell and three pearls symbolizing the three, three drops of water. Now, what does this mean? Well, the shell, if you're familiar with Christian symbolism, obviously is a symbol for baptism, and the three drops are symbolizing the three persons of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Why the star? Well, one, you could think of the Christmas star, and that would be appropriate, but there are five points on this star, and historically, the five points stood for the five wounds of Christ. So in a symbolic way, it reminds us that Jesus Christ has been crucified, that he bore five wounds in his crucifixion, two in his wrist, one in his side, two in his feet. And we in baptism are baptized into Christ. Paul says in Romans 6, baptized into his death. So this is a symbol of being baptized into the death of Christ. All right, let's put this guy back up here. If I can find where the little, uh, there it is. Oh, got it. Okay, another one over here, which may appear at first to be a strange thing to have on a Christmas tree. You say, why in the world do you have a picture of a serpent? All right, well, this one requires a little bit of talking about. There are a couple different ways to understand this. Number one, you have the story in the book of Numbers, where the people are in the wilderness coming out of Egypt, and God is taking them to the promised land, and they are grumbling. They're hungry. They're tired. They're grumbling against God. And God unleashes these fiery, poisonous serpents among them, and many of them die. They beg for mercy, and God tells, God tells Moses, hey, make a bronze serpent, put it up on a pole, and those who look to it will live. So you have this bizarre story, and that's what happens, right? Well, in the New Testament, Jesus in John chapter 3, just before probably the most famous verse in the Bible, John 3, 16, talks about that exact verse. And he says, just as the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness, so the Son of Man will be lifted up on the cross, and all who look to him in faith will live. So you have this deep symbolic imagery of the serpent on the pole, but also Christ being lifted up on his cross. Now there's one other image of the serpent that shows up in scripture, which is important, and that is right away in Genesis chapter 3. And if you were watching yesterday, you remember it was that great word I introduced to you, the proto-evangelium, the first time the gospel shows up, where the Lord says to Satan that Eve's offspring is going to crush Satan's head, the serpent's head. So the serpent also reminds us that Jesus will crush Satan. So this dual imagery and symbolism on the Christmas tree. Okay, let's put this guy back. I'm going to step on my cord here and get caught. All right, here, he came from over here. Uh, another one I wanted to share with you was, oh, where did he go? This guy. Okay, so you can see this an IHC. And you think, what does IHC mean? Well, it's Greek. And you say, I know, it's all Greek to me, right? Well, it's Greek, and it's actually the first three letters of Jesus' name in Greek, Jesus. And this is the capital letters in Greek, Yes. So it's an abbreviation for the name of Jesus. The circle around the name of Jesus, the circle oftentimes means eternal life. So we have eternal life in Jesus. Okay, let me see if I have time for one more guy before we call her quits for the day. I had over here one I wanted to share. Okay, so this guy, see if I can get it up close enough for you to see it. Okay, you can see Emmanuel. You can see the manger symbolized, and you can see this rose, this bloom, this, this flower blooming. So much symbolism here. The Emmanuel word coming from Isaiah chapter 7, and where you have the promise of the virgin being with child, and you will call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. And you see this fulfilled in the birth of Jesus. But you also have the Isaiah 11 passage where it talks about the shoot out of the stump of Jesse. And we just talked about that on Wednesday. 
that it will bloom, it will produce fruit. Oftentimes it's, it's symbolized as a, as a flower of some sort. And so you have the two Isianic prophecies symbolized in this chrismon. Emmanuel, the virgin with child, God with us, and the shoot out of the stump of Jesse blooms, and this is Jesus who is the shoot out of the stump of Jesse. So Jesus is fulfilling these, these two different prophecies in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 11 and Isaiah chapter 7. So again, all pointing to Jesus. Okay, let's see if I can put this guy back. Now, obviously, we could spend a lot longer going over a whole bunch more of the chrismons on the tree. They're all deep with symbolism. Again, the gold, the, the majesty of Christ, the white, the purity of Christ. But in some way, shape, or form, every single one of them points us to Jesus. Right? That's, again, they're chrismons. They're not Christmas ornaments, they're chrismons, and you can almost hear that name Christ built into that, that they are, they are pointing us in some way to Jesus, from their color to their symbol. In some ways, they are, are symbolizing Jesus and who he is and what he's done for us. So the next time you're in the Zion worship space or uh, you're worshiping online and maybe you can't see it on the camera, but you can you see those things on the tree, you know that all of those are pointing us to Jesus. Okay, thanks for taking time to be with me. Let's take a moment then to close with prayer. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise for the chrismons on our Christmas tree that all of them in some way point us to Jesus, that they all symbolize Jesus, from the gold symbolizing his majesty to the white symbolizing his purity to the, to the acronyms which in some way symbolize Jesus or they teach us that Jesus Christ is your son, our savior, or in some way remind us that Jesus of Nazareth is king of the Jews who has been crucified for our sins or that we are baptized into Christ, connected to the one who has suffered and died for us, all pointing us to Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Give us a deeper appreciation for the rich and profound symbolism before our eyes every time we gather in our worship space, that our hearts may be encouraged, that our, that our confession of Christ may be strengthened, and that we may look forward with joy to the day we will see Christ face to face, when we are resurrected in our, our resurrected bodies, the glory of God covering us, and we are free from this world of brokenness and sorrow. Grant us faith in this promise and a joyful anticipation to the day, for the day in which you will bring it to pass. Thank you for our time together. We give you all thanks and praise and glory in the name of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Again, thanks for taking time to be with me. Take a moment to check out Biola University's The Advent Project. We will be back here on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock and then 10.30 for Bible study. And Pastor Johnson is going to be here on Monday and is going to have Ron Moore with him uh, via StreamYard, but it'll be through Facebook Live, in a, having a conversation with her. She's our assistant to the president here in Iowa District West uh, for youth and other, other uh, areas of ministry. Should be a great conversation, and I encourage you to be a part of that on Monday morning. So thanks for being with me. We'll see you again soon.